Hi internet friends, my name is John and welcome to episode 5 in the series of how to create a website using Umbraco V8. In this video I'm going to be talking to you about the amazingly thrilling concept of global settings. And by the end of this video, I'm hoping you'll have enough information to decide where you want to store your global settings. So it's very easy for content editors to log into the CMS and manage things. So I'll be walking you through three different solutions. I'll be demonstrating each solution by a very cheesy web page that I've created. So we'll be using the cheesy team motivational web page. So remember, teamwork makes that dream work. So what we'll be doing in each technique is getting a feature flag in the back end, passing it into the code so we can disable and enable some cheesy team motivational sayings. Remember, if you're working at home and you want to play along, go to my GitHub, download the starter kit, which is the accompaniment to this series. Download it, you'll get all the code you see here. If you like this content and you like what you see, remember to hit that subscribe button, be a complete legend, do it right now. The first pattern that we're gonna discuss is the homepage pattern. Now you can probably guess by the name where the settings are gonna get stored in this one. Yes, that's right, it's on the homepage. So as you can see on the screen in front of us, we have this settings area, and here I've got a setting called feature flag one. If I went to my document types, you could see it's very simple. Now, this is a very common pattern that a lot of people use. You've seen how the settings are structured on the homepage document type within the CMS. I'll now walk you through how you can access those settings in code. Now, on the screen in front of me, you can see that I've got this homepage service. It's very simple. In the constructor, I'm passing in this Umbraco context factory. Now, this is a core service, and this is how we query pages within Umbraco. I've also created this get settings method. In here, I'm using the model, which has been generated by the Umbraco models builder. That's what this home thing is. Now, I'm also using this ensure Umbraco context. This is a safety check. It's probably not necessary in here. There's reasons why we need to do it. And it all depends on where this is being called in the page lifecycle. I'll cover that in another video because it's quite complicated. So when we're accessing a page in Umbraco, we always want to access our pages using the front end cache. We don't want to query the database. So this is what this line here is doing. The cache will give us access to the root node, which is the very top node in the CMS tree. So what we want to do is access the home page, which is a de uh, descendant of the root. So we're doing this. And because we only have one home page within our CMS, we can just use dot first. Now in a controller, we're accessing our settings using this home page setting. Again, I'm passing in and back a context factory. So I'm using dependency injection following good solid principles. And then I'm just using the get settings and now I have access to my feature flag one. I have two main issues with this homepage pattern, which I'll cover now. So the first one is around homepage bloat and performance. So at the start of the project, everything's great. We have specifications, design, a project team. Everyone knows what they're doing. All the settings are used and prevalent. However, over time, things change. The design might change. We might have extra components, different developers. So imagine in the future, say two years from time, someone decides that they no longer want this carousel. So we're gonna delete it. Now the developer goes through the code base, deletes the view, deletes all the controller code. However, they're unaware that there's a feature flag carousel setting and forgets to delete it. And this generally what happens is people forget about settings and the homepage starts to grow more and more. And because people don't know what's valid and not valid, it makes it really difficult to refactor. So generally the homepage gets more and more bloated. Now issue two that I have is all around usability. Content editors are using the homepage quite a lot. And let's be honest, the homepage is probably the most updated page on any website. So if you go onto the homepage and you have all these settings and the, the content editors don't understand what they do, it's gonna make it very difficult for them to do their job. In really extreme cases, I actually have seen content editors break a website because they've updated a setting accidentally. So being able to take all these properties off of the homepage is actually gonna make things a lot more secure and easier for people. Instead of storing your settings on the homepage, a better and more robust solution as far as I'm concerned is to create a dedicated settings document type. So in this pattern, we're going to put all of our settings on the settings document type. And whenever we need to access it, instead of accessing the homepage, we're now going to access the settings page. In the CMS, the settings page is normally called something really, really intuitive like settings page, original I know. But this pattern actually has two really good things that I like. So the first one is that we are separating settings and homepage data. 
this makes it much easier for the content editor to interact with the homepage. So imagine before they log onto the homepage, they want to make an update, they're presented with all these settings. It's really confusing and difficult for them to know what's related to the homepage and what's related to a different setting. They may even break the site by accident. This definitely happens. The other one is security. Now imagine you have some super secret password located on a global setting on your homepage. Now on another page, you want to window out the homepage title. You also have this super secret password in a field called top secret password. Now it'd be very easy for a slip of the keystroke to render out top secret password instead of title. So having a dedicated settings page will get around all of these issues. Let's just quickly look at how the settings page pattern can be applied within the CMS. So as you can see in front of the screen in front of me right here, we have this dedicated settings page. On here we have two feature flags, blue pill or the red one, and what came first, chicken or the egg. Classic feature flags you need. As you can see, our settings page is sat outside of the home page. Now, if we go to the amazing web page I've created, this is full of cheesy team management sayings. So remember, teamwork makes the dream work. Tough times don't last, but tough teams do. And team stands for together, everyone achieves more. Bah. All right, so if we go back into our CMS settings, if I just disable our feature flags, click save and publish, I've now hopefully doing a refresh, boom. We've lost a load of cringy sayings. In case you're wondering how I'm accessing the settings in code, I'll walk you through because that's the aim of this video. So I've created this settings page service. It has got a very basic interface, nothing clever here. Just exposing this settings page. Now in the constructor, I'm passing in Umbraco context factory, exactly the same as in the previous pattern. Here I've got my get settings, which is down here. Again, I'm using the ensure Umbraco context to get access to the context. I'm then getting access to the front end cache and I'm using the get at root descendants or self. And this time, instead of accessing the home page, I'm accessing that specific settings document type. Now, because I've got this setting service, I need to register it with a composer. If I do not do this, then the dependency injection within my cringe saying controller will not work. Then I'm now in my cringe settings controller. So I'm passing in my iSettings page through the constructor on the cringe saying controller. And in my index, I'm now accessing my feature flags. So as you can see here, I have settings page, blue pill or the red one. And it's this setting which is hiding and showing that row within our page. Simple. We are on the home stretch and I'm gonna discuss the last pattern with you now. So the problem with the settings pattern is we do not address the fundamental issue of the God class from happening. Over time, we're gonna have more and more settings, everything's gonna go on the settings page and it's still gonna be really confusing what does what, uh, understanding when things become obsolete and trying to refactor that settings page. So one way of making the settings page easier to manage is to split those settings into different blocks. Now, as of Umbraco v8.9, we have a brand new property which is called the block list editor. And this allows us to create a page and put different blocks on there. Now, the intention of this property is to use it for creating different components. So uh, content editors can create dynamic pages. However, you can also use it to put on different settings document types. So now we have a way of easily adding and removing settings onto the settings page. Let's quickly cover what this looks like. We are now back on our settings page and let's have a look at this bottom property here. It's called feature flags. So this is our block list editor in action. So I'll talk you through what the document type looks like in a minute. However, the thing to keep in mind is at the moment I've configured it to have one block and this block is called the feature flag block. And I'm now gonna put all my feature flags inside this block. So instead of having blue pool or red pool or what came first, what came first, chicken or the egg on the settings page, I'm now gonna put them within this feature flag block. So clicking on this gives me access to the feature flag, which I can turn on and off. So if I have a look at my web page, you can see that it's currently turned off. If I turn it on, click save and submit, click save and submit, go back to my web page. Hopefully when I refresh, I've got my data back. Let's have a quick deep dive of how the document type looks. So if we go to my settings page, 
as you can see here we have this feature flag property it's of type umbraco block list now i'm going to go through the block list in a future video because there's some really cool things you can do with it the important thing to know at the moment is we have this available block and we have this feature flag block so if i click add i can add in new blocks but this gives us a very easy way of creating a settings page and then being able to group our settings and this means that content editors can now easily refactor and keep settings in check this is really really nice i really like this and this is the pattern that i use on every service cms all the time now let's close it down so let's quickly look at the feature flag block in case you're wondering so this is a very simple document type it's of type elements this is really important so you need to have all blocks set as element types back into our design you can see we just have this simple feature flag Before we finally wrap up, I'll talk you through how to access a blocking code. So we're back in our setting service that we created and went through a minute ago. If we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see I have this feature flag method. So because our feature flag is a property on our settings page, we still need access to the settings page. So this is exactly the same as the code we went through above. The property is called feature flags, and this is a enumerable list of I published content. So what we're going to do is iterate through our list and we're going to search for our feature flag block. So we can do this by doing content type dot alias equals our feature flag alias. So this is going to guess our feature flag block. And then we just do a first. This first is going to return a I publish content. And then all we're going to do is pass in our I publish content into our feature flag. This is the model which has been generated by the Embraco model builder and return it. So if we go into our controller now, as you can see, we now have access to settings, our feature flag, and our feature flag one. And this is exactly how we access all of our properties. So it doesn't really give us any more extra code. It's very simple to access, and it gives us that level of abstraction in our settings page, which will make things much easier to maintain in the future. This is a win. As I said, it's new as of um, Umbraco 8.9. So I strongly recommend that you adopt this pattern whenever you need to do global settings with Umbraco because you'll be ace. And there we have it. What do you think of those different patterns? Which one do you prefer? Please leave a comment below. As you can see, there's a few different ways of dealing with global patterns in Umbraco. Choose the one which works for you. I will always go for the block approach because trust me, it will make your life much easier. But hey, go with your heart. So if you want to be an absolute legend and this is the easiest way that anyone in this universe will think of you as a legend today, please hit subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. If you want to do me a solid, then please hit the like button. It will just mean that other people can view this content. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day and happy coding.